Hello everyone and welcome to this daily slash weekly race guide. This is week 28 in 2020 in terms of the daily slash weekly race guide. And this one is a bit of an SR killer. So if you are worried about your DR or SR, I'd probably avoid this week if I was you. But first of all, let's have a look at each of the races. Let's jump into race A first and let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. Welcome to Italy then and Lego Maggiore. This week we are just using the east section of Lego Maggiore, so that means we miss out on the long back straight and also that very tight hairpin, of course, the banked hairpin that we're all very used to at Lego Maggiore. Now, in terms of the race details, let's have a look at those. The race is four laps in length. It is a grid start and you will need traction control. Or, well, you need traction control for the most part. Some people might want to control it themselves. Uh, and we are on sports hard tyres. Now, in terms of the car, the car is provided by Gran Turismo. And we are racing in the Ferrari 458. Now, while racing this, it seems like it's got no grip. So let's jump to the race and I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail. So here we are at the start then, a nice little flash for you there, uh, and we're going to have tractor control on, on one here. So a normal start, accelerate it away, you can see it working away there, down at that bottom right. We just hit the rev limiter and we hit the rev limiter again. What we have to be careful of then with the Ferrari 458, very short gear ratios there, so just be careful. Now I break early here, very early, and everyone seems to behave themselves really here uh, as we come through the left. Now you're going to have to be careful because the Constantino effect is going to have an impact there. You can see that as that yellow Ferrari on the left goes off and everyone just hit into each other. No one was really being dirty there. It was just a fact that everybody just ended up going into each other and then obviously it just amplified every time somebody else went into the back of somebody else. Uh, as, as we come through here, I'd always recommend staying on the inside here. Try and clip your tyre on that inside kerb. It will drag you around the corner and will help you accelerate out the corner here uh, as we just get a better gear change there. I'm assuming that driver had traction control on, which is why my gear shift was actually better. Coming into here, you have to brake extremely early. Very early, a lot earlier than you even anticipate. So just be careful of that as we come through here. I'll explain that braking point in a little bit more detail on our second run through. Uh, as we come up to this left, I'm going to catch up to this Ferrari driver here. Again, just be very careful. Try and balance the car as best as you can. It's all about weight transfer here. I can't really do much with the uh, driver in front at the moment, so I'm just staying behind. But it's all about weight transfer. So I'm just balancing that throttle. I'm not trying to go full on, full off, full on, full off. Uh, and even here, be careful of uh, just understeering off. As you can see there, I really do understeer quite far there as we head towards the braking zone. And again, brake extremely early, well before the cones. The cones are useless here, so do not use them. They're on, obviously, just as a guide for you folks because you asked for them. But even so, they are not good here. As we leave that corner, we're going to finish lap one. Uh, just to show you the impact of a full, you know, a full uh, sprint towards turn one, you're braking extremely early here. So I'm normally braking around the last tent, usually. I broke a little bit earlier there. Uh, but you can see the drive in front just broke a little bit too late and went flying into Manu Gas there as we then hit the right hander. Uh, again, coming out of here, you can plant your foot quite early in this car. It's very controllable in terms of its oversteer. It's the understeer that is really hard to control. As you see, I'm trying to use the curb as best as I can to get round. Trying to use the track to my advantage. Trying to get the car turned a little bit more with the track. So again, I'm trying to use that curb. Notice how it pulled me around. I can accelerate out the way there uh, and continue on. We are going to advance to lap number four now uh, and just uh, go through this lap a little bit more. So in terms of braking early here, normally you brake at the end of the curbing. I'm braking well before the end of that curbing on the left-hand side. Just be careful here, honestly. Uh, if you are anywhere near that curbing as well on the left, as you brake, you're going to end off in Narnia. So just make sure you're braking in the middle of the track, aiming towards that corner and just being very careful. Uh, again, into here, as I said earlier, balance the throttle. You can see that. Look, I'm just 25, 50%, then 100. Then I'm backing off again. Then I'm on it again. I'm trying not to use the brake because if I use the brake, the car will start oversteering and it'll get unsettled. So just be careful of that as we come through this right-hander. Now, I'm going to show you how braking at the cones doesn't work uh, here. So we're going to head towards them now. We brake just before them. You can see I'm trying to stop the car. It just doesn't want to stop. That's why you brake extremely early for here. I mean, I'm talking 20, 30 meters before the cones. Uh, a very hard combo, so it's very risky to do. You saw a lot of incidents there. Uh, no dirty driving, just people making mistakes. I make mistakes in that as well. Just be very careful with that. That's it for race A, though. Not one I'd recommend personally, just because of the front, uh, the front end grip not being there in this Ferrari 458. Let's head now towards race B, and let's look at that in a little bit more detail. Welcome to Brazil then and into Lagos and we're probably in the most common or most featured combo that appears in daily races uh, and that's because I think the balance of performance tests are done here which is why it appears so often and why the cars are so balanced here. But before we get into the cars let's have a look a little bit more at the race details. 
Race B then is five laps in length and we have a rolling start of course into Lagos an absolutely massive start finish straight so do not worry about traction control at all and we are on racing hard tyres. As I say the balance of performance test is done here so in terms of cars group three pick what you like in terms of group three. Now this week because I had a complaint because I picked Audi again last week even though I do like Audi uh, I'm going to go with the car that's at the top of the leaderboards this week and that is at the moment of recording this the Corvette Group 3 car. Very powerful car on the straight I found uh, but we'll talk about the car's gearing in the race. Let's jump to the race then and I'll talk you through a, f a few additional tips and tricks. So as always, I'm showing the grid initially for Group 3, and as you can see, it's absolutely all sorts of cars. So as I say, pick what you like, and this car was, at the time of racing anyway, the fastest car in terms of the leaderboard in EMEA, so I chose this car. Now you can see we've got a Beetle in front of us, you've got a McLaren F1. I say, pick what you like, have some fun with Group 3. It's a good class to have fun with, you know, pick the cars you enjoy racing. You don't have to pick a car you don't enjoy racing, like Group 4 at the moment. Anyway, we're going to kick off. As you can see, we don't need traction control here. So we're going to instantly set off here. Uh, and you can see with the Corvette, if you decide to use this, uh, I'm shifting a little bit too high. Just shift around the 60% margin or 70% around the area. That's where it's got peak power. Um, and that's where you can, uh, you know, gain the most power out of the car. As you see a bit of an incident there. Um, so the first thing to note, really, in terms of the race and giving you a few tricks, uh, don't go on the outside here. You will always get run off. And we're going to have a prime example here when the uh, Turkish driver just keeps pushing me off and then I'm completely off. I decide I'm going to go a bit sneaky here, go inside the invisibility uh, and I'm going to stay there to overtake and that way I'm not going to get bashed off to Narnia uh, and we are successful with that as we just appear suddenly out of nowhere ahead of the Turkish driver. Woohoo! We have a sneaky way to overtake so there's a little another trick for you. Anyway, continuing up here, um, we're going to break around our normal breaking point. I say around our normal breaking point, I'm going to uh, link the Interlagos track guide I have from the past. It's from like, ages ago. I think it's 2018 maybe. Um, very well worth a watch. The brake markers are still the same. Uh, it's in a Group 3 car as well. So, you know, if you want to look at brake markers in detail, check that out. It's not the Ultimate Track Guide series, but it's still a very detailed track guide of Interlagos. As we come through here, you're going to have to be careful of being on the outside here. I, they gave me plenty of space there, did the uh, McLaren F1 GTR driver. So uh, happy days there. We continue on towards the last sector. And like for that corner, for example, it's, uh, right where the cones are, there's a little dirt patch on its own. And that is my brake marker for that last corner. Uh, but as I say, the track guide, the detailed track guide will have that in for you. Uh, and we are going to jump to a track guide now. Just to give you a bit more info, uh, I realised I haven't actually edited the first corner in here, but the first corner, you're looking for uh, the blue... T oh, no, I have edited in. Apologies, forget what I was about to say. It's heading towards this turn one. On the left-hand side with the pit canopies, you're looking for the blue one. I just run a little bit deep here. There's a blue one on the left. Look for that one. It should be fine for you. It's in between two red ones. Continue through here. You want to clip the curb like I did there. Uh, it brings the car around a little bit. So very similar to race A. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more grip. Gets the car rotated a little bit more. As you head towards this left-hander, the tarmac there on the right is normally your brake marker and you want to use all the curb on the left and try and avoid that dark astro turf on the right hand side normally that spins out a lot of cars and we've seen that in the car profiles uh, and balance performance test as we head up here there's a, a, a little uh, black mark in the road that's what you're looking for i say in fourth gear here in this particular car you want to click both curbs here and then uh, you're looking for the uh, little black mark on the left just outside the curb on that left uh, for this corner here and here you're just balancing the car through the corner as now we continue on up here and it, literally the dark astro turf on the left that's what i use as a brake marker normally you want to clip that curb on the inside so make sure you do that and as you come through here you are going to have to lift a little bit in all cars no car can do this flat lift make sure you clip the curb get round happy days for this last corner clip that curb on the inside try and straighten up as best as you can so you don't get oversteer when you accelerate out that corner and you're going to head towards the line now this race is actually quite a good race to be honest it's one that you can enjoy you won't have to worry about your SR that much uh, you should be able to just have a decent race with at least one person in the race uh, so one I'd actually highly recommend but I know it's been done quite a lot but that's going to be it in terms of race B let's actually now head to race C which is uh, a little bit carnage and a killer Welcome to France then and the Circuit de la Sauf for race C. Now we are actually using the no chicane variation. 
you are going flat out down the Mulsan all the way to Mulsan Corner. No chicanes in there at all, uh, so it can get a little bit crazy. But before we get to the race, let's have a look at the details that we will be uh, racing with. Um, and we are racing six laps at the circuit. So quite a lengthy race in the grand scheme of daily races, which is kind of cool, actually. So, you know, thumbs up for that one. Rolling starts. Now, this means we have the chicanes at the very end of the circuit. I would highly advise you use traction control to get yourself underway in the race. We are on racing hard tyres, so don't expect a pit stop here. And you can see by the fuel usage of times one and tyre wear times five that the pits are not meant to be used here in this race. It's meant to be a flat out race from lap one all the way through to the end of lap six. Now, in terms of cars that we can use... Uh, it's no hybrids this time, which is unusual for Group 1. Because we're using the full length of the Mulsanne with no chicanes, you need the top-end speed. And what better way to get the top-end speed than to use the Group C cars of the, that era? Uh, yes, the hybrids are gone. We're back with the absolutely crazy stuff like the 787B. However, this week on this race, you want to use the fastest car of them all, the Nissan R92. Uh, absolutely rapid machine, hitting 232 down the Mulsanne. Bunkos. Let's jump to that race and let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail uh, before we look at some Tidge Rage. So here we are with race C then, and uh, yes, you can see my brake balance minus two. Um, people varied with this, uh, speaking in Discord, uh, people were on plus one in some parts. Uh, I just kept it at minus two just to keep it simple, so just an idea for you folks there. Uh, now, I don't start with traction control here, but I would recommend doing that. I did that in the first race, and you're probably going, Tidge, this is your second race? Yes, it is. I will show you, uh, well, one reason why it's my second race, actually, is I forgot to record the first race, which is really annoying because of what happened in it. Uh, but second of all, um, I wanted to show you a bit of a cleaner race because I was going to use a replay file and I thought, nah. See there how the hybrids caused a little bit of an issue there? Uh, somebody decided to try and cut the chicane. Doesn't work. Gets reset. So we get a few positions straight off the bat there. See how the hybrids kick off. The hybrids are no good here, folks. You see that now. Do not think that hybrids are going to be worthwhile taking. They're not. Trust me, I'll show you why later on. Go through to turn one. Just break early. Stay on the inside as best as you can because you can see what's happening up ahead. Lots of carnage here. I'm trying to avoid the uh, the car appearing there suddenly. Uh, it doesn't, so we can continue on now through the chicane. Be careful not to cut that chicane too much, especially the first part of it. If you get a penalty, you're going to absolutely get destroyed on the Mulsan straight because the penalty zone for it is on the Mulsan right in the middle. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second because you can see somebody up ahead has a penalty. Now, uh, later on, I'm going to show you a better way to take this corner. You see, I've just got a little bit of a push from behind. Uh, essentially, you should be in fourth gear before you leave that corner, not third. Because you may have noticed in these uh, Group C cars, that we are going to call them, uh, there's a delay in gear shift. So, you know, you go from third to fourth, there's a delay. It's like a... Uh, uh, and that so um, just keep that in mind now you may hear the background noise of the game and f wonder why it's so deep I've no idea why the audio seems to have corrupted itself for some reason I can only apologize for that I noticed it's on race B as well as race C I'm not sure what's happened there because as I say I, re I record as normal now you can see the penalty zone we've just passed it there and look at that person on the left they've been absolutely just killed by it because we're going 232 miles an hour and they're going like 150 as you see, we just have to take a purge on the right hand side. That shows you that you need the top end in this car. Uh, and we're gonna, I, will, I will show you later on an even worse example of why you need the top end uh, versus a hybrid. Uh, heading towards Mulsanne though, uh, I get the braking slightly wrong here. Just go a little bit too deep. You can see that here. So I dropped to first gear. Now, this is what you should do if you go too deep at Mulsanne. Come on, very slowly. Stay towards the left hand side of the circuit. You're out the way. It gives everybody an idea of what's going on. I saw constantly people just jumping straight back onto the circuit and causing more crashes. Don't do that. Just come on gradually, uh, you know, towards the right-hand side. People are aware of what you're doing then. Slowly but surely uh, and continue on. I'm actually going to show you a little trick later on when you've got dirt on your tyres on this little bit of straight as we head towards Indianapolis. Now, with this corner, you want to brake, turn in, and then brake again. Try and brake like, uh, straight line the brake as much as possible. I've got dirt on my tyres still at the moment, which is why I ran a little bit deep there. But we overtake a couple of people who have all got that corner. It's all sorts of wrong. So we head to Arnage now. Uh, go around the right-hander. Stay in second gear for this. Do not be in first. Just let the car accelerate out. Straight it, point it straight as you can out that corner and just put your foot to the floor. 
as we then head towards the Porsche Curse. I'm going to show you the entire lap here of the first lap to give you an idea of some of the carnage that may happen because you may have noticed that my SR has dropped in when I entered this race. Um, there's a reason for that, but uh, as I say, we'll show that later on. You can see more people off at Porsche Curves. Uh, you break at the dark green Astro turf, but we are going to do a lap later on. I will point out the brake markers for you as we come into here. It's dropped to third gear at this moment in time, uh, and then a little trick I learned later on, shift to fourth there, because what you're doing again, that gear... There you go, you heard it there. The, the delay in the gear shift, if you do it mid-corner, you're actually going to help the car and its speed overall in the end uh, as we hit the... Uh, chicane now this driver in front has all sorts of problems at the chicane as you're about to witness oh i think i don't I'm not sure if they hit the handbrake to be honest with you but even so we can continue on right let's show you some more tips and tricks now so uh, we go a little bit further actually no this isn't tip or trick this is just being hit for unknown reasons uh, i don't know why they hit me there and i don't know why they hit me again here look they hit me off and um, weirdly i'm gonna get a shortcut penalty because i went off the circuit Thank you, Gran Turismo. Excellent penalty system. Anyway, um, technically they are right. I did cut the circuit, but surely the person hitting me beforehand should have been noted in that uh, decision. But even so, we can continue on as we then hit left-hander. I'm actually going to show you why the 787B is not the choice of car here and why this is the only choice you really can have for this race. So we took it in here. There's that fourth gear that I mentioned. Stop that uh, gear shift uh, delay there and you can see that uh, DJ Donya has uh, had to do that shift and suddenly be getting a lot very quickly uh, and we're going to be going side by side the 787B is actually going to have good acceleration up towards its top speed you can see that there it's slightly pulling on me again where it did lose it but then it's going to hit the peak and we continue on all the way to 231 now up ahead you can see one of the hybrid cars there that's up ahead uh, look how fast we are catching up to that car it is unbelievable we're about to hit the penalty zone though so you're about to see uh, the impact here this is 0.5 of a penalty and you can instantly see that impact right there it's it's much more than a 0.5 fortunately though because this car has such high top speed it doesn't lose us too much but versus the same car it's a big problem as you see the hybrid car not in a month for sundays is it the right choice look at this we just absolutely fly past it and we had the uh, slowdown penalty as well remember so that is why you do not pick the hybrid cars, okay, folks? Do not pick them. They are rubbish here. Do, do not pick them in the slighters. Uh, we see we got hit there a little bit from behind by the uh, Spaniard there. Uh, we managed to stop it even with the hit, and they managed to stop it as well. All sorts of carnage uh, ensuing at this point. It is an SR killer, this race. Just keep that in mind. So here's this uh, short, uh, short shift to fourth very quickly. We get through that corner, and this is why you don't pick a hybrid. Watch the speed difference now, and watch how much time they actually lose. So they were easily miles ahead of us there. They were over second just then. Uh, and look at the speed we are catching. This is this is why you do not pick a hybrid. We are going to, going to overtake. And now watch that gap just continuously increase towards the second. Poor, poor driver. Poor, poor driver. Look at it go up. Seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. And a second. And then they're going to get overtaken. So you can see why. You do not use hybrids. Anyway, we advance a bit further on here. I'm going to show you what to do when you run wide at Mulsanne now. Because I found this braking zone very temperamental. Sometimes you ran deep, sometimes you didn't. Which is why so much carnage happens at Mulsanne. Um, so you can see that I ran a little bit deep. I do have dirt on my tyres, okay? So this is a very good trick that you can use. So uh, essentially, what you will have seen in FIA races, top 16 races, is drivers warming up their tyres. You can do the same when you have dirty tyres. So I'm just weaving on the straight at this point, trying to get rid of the dirt on the tyres, trying to get that grip up to a, a place where it's absolutely fine to race again and, and, you know, it will help itself in the braking zones. We head towards Indianapolis. I just stopped the weaving then. I chuck it in. I still got a little bit of dirt on my tyres. I can definitely feel that. And I run a little bit deep, but nothing major like I did previously, if you remember that um, in the previous clip. So we're going to advance to do a fast lap now. We're going to do a fast lap here. So we just get to the end of lap five here. Uh, we're going to continue on. You can see the Spaniard towards the right. Uh, we're just going to come across um, a little bit more there. But uh, we managed to just squeeze on there. And we can continue on to the first corner. So just be careful of cutting the right side here. Come across. Touch the curb. Same fourth break where the cones are. It's literally where you straighten up. Do not cut the first part. That's the major part here. You can cut a little bit more of the second part and go a bit more risky there. But... Just be careful. As I say, the penalty is in the middle of the Mulsanne. So if you risk a penalty there, problems will happen on the Mulsanne because you're going to drop so much speed and then you have to catch it all back up again. It's more than the, the, the slowdown is actually saying as well. Uh, so, you know, shift to fourth gear there, turn into Tetra Rouge. Be careful running wide. That's the critical area there. If you run even slightly wide, you're going to get a penalty. So I always try and cut it a little bit more on the inside now rather than trying to risk running wide on the outside. I've shifted to fourth there as well. If you're a bit unsure... 
make sure you just lift and wait until you get round before you accelerate. In the grand scheme of it, you're on the Mulsanne for so long, it's better to just maybe risk that little bit in order to get to your top speed. As you saw, our top speed didn't really change there because we've got no slipstream. As we hit Mulsanne, break before the cones there. Uh, it's about 20 meters or so before the cones, maybe even 10 meters, sorry. As we come through there, stay in second gear. Again, it's more just like point and squirt and off we go with a little bit of speedy footage again. So as you head towards Indianapolis, I always dab the brakes here in any Group 1 car. It gets me straight. And then and you can see I try and overlay a little bit, but I've gone a little bit too deep. That dirty edge just affects me a little bit. Be very careful of that as we then head towards our Nage. I break at the cones. It might be worth having the cones on here. They're not too much of a problem when people hit them, um, but uh, they can be very helpful there as we continue on now towards the Porsche curves. Uh, again, you're going to have a little bit of uh, dirty air if you're following somebody. Dirty air at the Porsche curves is kind of critical in any Group 1 car. Uh, so just be careful of this. Uh, but essentially, on the on the left hand side is a dark astro turf. That is where I break. We're just about it now. We break there. Drop to fourth gear. Uh, I dropped to third, but you should just I should have just stayed in fourth there. Keep it in fourth gear. Go through these uh, corners. Just balance the throttle where appropriate. Now you drop to third gear uh, because you're just going slightly slower here. It's a longer right hander. Then chuck it up to fourth again. Mid corner. You can see that. And that's going to stop that gear delay, the, 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 the transmission delay when you change gear as we continue on towards the final chicane now. Uh, again, you're going to break just, uh, well, you're going to break a little bit later than I did there because I was just a bit cautious of the driver in front. Uh, but basically, look for the curbs on the right hand side. As we come through here, I'm just going to cut the, uh, the, the chicane a little bit there. I couldn't really see it. I was hoping to try and get a run on the Spaniard. I don't quite do it. So we finish the lap there. That's the race done. Now, as I said, this is my second race. I'm going to show you the first race and what happened and why my SR has gone down. Um, because I did react as well. And I got an angry Tidge and I went full red mist. Three strikes and you're out. That's the rule I always use. Let's look at that now. So here we are in the race. And uh, obviously we're on replay and it's still got that dodgy sound. I'm not sure what on earth has gone on here. But you can see the German in front of me. So it's actually going to involve the, that German driver. But at the moment... We're racing fine and happy days, you know. I'm right behind him here. Uh, I go to overtake here and I just get that gear shift. So at that point, I actually realized he was using traction control, actually, which is very helpful to me. There is a, a big difference when you use traction control in terms of the gear change. It's even more delayed than it normally is anyway. Uh, but there's only five gears in this car. So, you know, we're coming over to Indianapolis here. And uh, it's one of those where you can go side by side. I try and do it here. And to be fair, you know, it's all nice and clean. You know, we're racing lovely side by side stuff and uh we continue racing here as we head towards our now uh and this race was the first race that i did of that day of course as well and uh you see sushia up in the lead there actually the uh, fugu frenzy pole sitter for round number two there so a uh, great job on that lap as well but i thought i'd show you the calm tidge before the tidge that just lost the plot in this race but anyway we continue on towards uh the porsche curves here Again, all nice and larry. Happy days, just racing through here. And then uh, we come through to the left. Hit the barrier like an absolute pleb. Of course we hit the barrier. Uh, we, we do act like a pleb sometimes when they hit that. But, you know, we don't go into these races with that much practice. And we come through here. I noticed a mistake by the German driver. So I go, excellent, I'll go for the move here. But as we come through here, I noticed on radar it came straight across there. So I lifted to avoid that. We come down here, and at this point, normally the outside car would give up here. Um, it doesn't, but that's going to just cause contact. So, very confused by that. Uh, but even so, we just continue racing. I just thought, oh, nothing of it, personally. Uh, do you know what I mean? Uh, it's unfortunately got a penalty, but as I say, normally if you're the outside car going into the chicanes, you back off and just pull in behind because it's not a two-by-two -two chicane. You, you can't really do it in any of these cars. Um, but we go a bit further on in the race. I'm racing Mordor here, or Mordor, uh, but I'm going to say Mordor because it's better. Again, side by side, there's nothing major going on here. Uh, and this was a very risky move by me, and I just got run out uh, wide there. I mean, I was a bit frustrated by it, don't get me wrong. I mean, you should give space to the, to, you know, to the car on the outside there because I was there. But it's expected in daily races, so I just flashed my lights here just to, you know, like... That was a bit annoying, but anyway, I'll catch you up in a second. Uh, it's all good. Uh, so, yeah, we'll continue on here. Just fast forward this a little bit, of course. Uh, there's actually a, quite a large portion of this. Uh, I thought I'd show, you know. This is why I was a bit frustrated. Race, I forgot to record race C. Um, I literally looked down. I was like, oh, crap, I've not recorded this. Uh, and I tried to do the share thing and it didn't work. But, you know, the chicane thing that I was mentioning about where you normally let off if you're the outside car. More door shows it here perfectly. You just let off, pull it behind and carry on the race. You don't risk anything. But anyway, that's just how you do that um, chicane. If you are on the outside, just be uh, very careful, as I say, uh, because it's not two by two. It really isn't two by two. Anyway, we uh, we continue on all the same. We're going to fast forward a little bit more here. You see the French guy in front of me now. Uh, this French guy, um, 
I think we're struggling a little bit on the brakes. Uh, I think Tashia mentioned that the uh, uh, the driver actually broke himself uh, earlier on in the race. Um, accidentally, of course. You can see how close we are here. We're right behind the Frenchman. So I'm going to show you some bad driving by me here now. Um, and it's twice, actually. So we're coming down here. And um, obviously the Mulsanne. We're going at 3 billion miles an hour here as we head towards Mulsanne Corner now. Uh, you can see I'm very close here. So I'm, I'm automatically going to just break early here. So I break early. Uh, and then I just slightly tap him, but it's all good because actually he stops well before the corner anyway So no, no harm done there. He just broke a little bit early. Uh, I broke early, but uh, obviously not early enough there so, yeah, That's my bad. I get a second penalty for it Which is a bit annoying because we both made the corner and no one gained an advantage but even so But here's a, a really bad mistake by myself coming to here um, And I just don't stop the car fast enough. So unfortunately I hit the Frenchman, but this is what you should do This is good sportsman conduct in my opinion. Just wait for the driver. Let them come back on I've got additional penalty there. It doesn't matter. I deserve that I've uh, I hit the driver in front. So then what I do, you know, I just stay behind here. I'm not going to try and overtake. I would actually push the driver along if I could uh, as we leave that corner. I've got to do it on my tyres, so will the uh, Frenchman. Frenchman carries on there. I get the two-second penalty. Happy days. All good. Right, now this is where the Tidge Rage starts to come into play. And I know you all like a bit of drama, especially when it involves me occasionally, because I don't rage very often. The last time I had Red Mist against someone was probably like two years ago in GT Sport. Like, properly re uh, Red Mist. Uh, come through here as we come into the braking zone. Uh, the German comes across my nose a little bit there, but I do, don't think anything of it. I just think you're lucky that I was being very nice there, you know, trying to give you lots of room on the outside, but nothing of it. Anyway, we continue on racing. See, we're racing perfectly reasonable and fine. Um, but here starts the strikes. So obviously, I, I've already said to you in the past, I run by strike rule. Watch this. So I'm on, I'm on, the, I'm on here. He just pushes me out wide for no reason whatsoever and then uh, keeps pushing me off. No idea why. And then breaks a little bit early, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, okay. Um, so, that happens. Uh, so, he's tried to run me off twice there. And I, I don't understand why. What have I done in the race at that point that's caused that? So, he's on two strikes at the moment. And I, I, I must admit, I was pretty peed off at this point. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, I've tried to race clean with you through the Porsche curves. And then you just randomly try and cut me off for no reason whatsoever. Uh, so very moronic driving, in my opinion. But anyway, we, uh, we continue on. Uh, we've got a half-second penalty, but the, uh, the German's going to get another half-second penalty in front. So we'll be racing each other again shortly. Anyway, we continue on. And um, there, there you go. Tetra Rouge. I say be very careful of Tetra Rouge because you don't want a half-second penalty because it's actually more than half-second. But yeah, I was, I was pretty peed off, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I was thinking, excellent, I can at least race you now until the end of the race. Uh, I accidentally moved across when my new gas was there. That's n nothing major here, but I can see what's going to happen. Three cars into one doesn't go here. So uh, what you will see is what I would always uh, tell everyone to do. Just back off here. Let them go racing. You see Manu Gas tries to avoid the German there. Goes around the outside. I think hits another driver maybe. Yes, hits a Sauber driver there. Oh no, it's not Sauber. It's still the Nissan. And we continue on racing. And again, look, we're just racing fine again now. So I'm not sure what the issue was personally. Uh, so I'm thinking, yes, excellent. Uh, I've, I've got passed. Anyway, we're catching up to Spook, which, who unfortunately, um, oh, fortunately, fortunately for Spook, won race A, so it shows good light, but was in the wrong car here, unfortunately. Uh, so not having the brilliant, most brilliant race. Again, Indianapolis, we're, we're two by two here, so I back off early here. We all slow down. There's a slight tap there, but there's nothing major. Everyone's just trying to slow down and uh, run accordingly. Um, I'm not sure if that was oversteer or pushing me off again. I was getting a bit frustrated with it now at this point, you know, obviously. Um, so we leave this corner, and again, you're going to see the traction control issue here. So watch the gear change in a second. Look at the big difference there in terms of speed. So again, we're coming through here, and just push me a little bit there. So I just come across, so I don't do that again. Boom, tries to go for the pit maneuver. So I'm like, no, sod this, you're having that back. So he tries to go around the outside. I'm like, no, I'm doing a grid. I'm doing the grid, the old grid take out there, front of the rear of my car, front of his. Th well over three strikes at this point. I'm just like, sod off, mate. Like literally, you can try and push me for a month of Sundays. It ain't gonna happen. Um, so uh, you know, some of you won't like that, but that, there's just a bit of drama. You know, uh, I like to show you the good parts of uh, myself, but I also show you the real parts of myself. Do you know what I mean? It's all right putting videos out there that shows positives all the time, but. Yeah. Uh, oh, and again, we get we get inside each other here. So I was just like, nope, I'm having this. So yeah, uh, I took that position. And we carry on racing as normal. Very strange. As you know, I've always run my life and everything I do by three strikes and you're out rule. Um, never respond over one action. As I, as I showed you there, I didn't respond over one. It was over three, in my opinion. Uh, but that's going to be it this week for the uh, guide. I hope you enjoyed that video and a little bit of drama. The Interlagos track guide is there for you. But uh, thanks very much for watching. And I hope you to see you in another video or live stream very soon.